It will give you something that will make you feel comfortable. Let me tell you, Jesus says, beware of covetousness. He says, your life does not consist in the amount of money that you have. Praise the Lord. Stop measuring your spirituality in the amount of money that you have. Amen? Uh huh. Anyway, this boy missed the point. Look for money, went to waste it. Money that is not blessed of God is a shame. You have mentioned sometimes men will go to waste because it comes from the enemy and the enemy will take it back. And then eventually he came to himself. The Bible says he came to himself. The Bible says he came to himself. His understanding was open. He said to himself, I will go to my father and be his son. I will go and serve him. I will go and humble myself. But here's where we are going this morning. Change of status. Everybody say change of status. The moment he rose to go to his father, the Bible says when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. His father was waiting for him all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, I want to also, because today is Father's Day, amen. I want to bring in something here for all fathers. Hallelujah. How many fathers are here? How many fathers are here today? Praise the Lord. I congratulate you that we hear this. Fathers are strong. Is that not so? Physically, they are strong. Financially, they are strong. Emotionally, they are stronger than mothers. Most of the time, it's the mothers who cry. Sometimes the fathers cry. Hallelujah. They are strong. And they are not supposed to use their strength to destroy the family. Amen. You as a father must have a father heart. You must have the father heart of God the Father. This son was, he didn't deserve mercy. Is that not so? He was rude, he was wicked, he was calculated, he was covetous. He was taking the father's inheritance when the man was still alive. The father was supposed to curse him or shoot him. Is that not so? But the Bible says all along he was looking out, hoping that he would come back, hoping that he would uh, turn around and change. I remember something uh, that happened last year when I was in the US. One day, my minute younger brother, he called me and he began to report his son to me, the name in New Orleans. He began to record the son to me, what he has done, <clears throat> and it was, it was so painful to his heart that he began to cry. I have never, even when we were growing together and the beat one of us, my brother was, he would not cry. He cried and my heart broke. And I said, why are you crying? No, let's pray about this. He said, no, I don't want to pray about it. I just want to curse him. I said, no. No, okay, I will pray. So that night I didn't sleep. I was seeking God. What the boy has done was really not good. I was really seeking the Lord. And God said, Give him Psalm 103, verse 13. Go there, let's go there. Psalm 103, verse 13. And I'm addressing Father said today, I don't know how many of you have children that have disappointed you. Maybe mothers as well, grown up children that have not gone the way that you expect them to go. <clears throat> Verse 13 says, like I say, Father, pity his children, so the Lord pity them that fear him. For he knoweth our friend, he remembered that they are dust. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, Call your brother. And give him that word. And God is also a man of God. He's a medical doctor, but he's a man of God as well. So I called him. 
And I said, God said I should give you that scripture. And you know what he said? He said, immediately he read it, the compassion came. Hallelujah. I pray that we will have compassion for the children in our homes in the name of Jesus. Because many times they will push you to the point that you want to curse. They will push you to the point that you want to, you want to just uh, uh, disown them, disinherit them. Don't do that. Hallelujah. Satan is the one that is trying to destroy them. Praise the Lord. So I spoke to him. And I gave him this example that we just said. And look at this, what uh, this boy did in this parable. Jesus does not just talk to us. Everything he's speaking has meaning. Hallelujah. If he is telling us that why the boy was still far off, the father was looking out for him with compassion. He is telling us to have compassion on the children in our families and to pray for them. Amen? Amen. And then, well, we know that this boy repented. He said he was sorry. You know, sometimes even without repentance, you can give compassion. Especially if God directs you to do it, because he knows the reason behind whatever that person is doing. Anyway, let's go back to our topic. So, as soon as the son repented, as soon as he gave up his uh, wild ways, his father, who was full of compassion, took him, kissed him, and then the son now spoke to the father and said, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his son, Bring forth the best robe, that's where we are going, put it on him. Put on a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted cow and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. This my son was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found, and he began to be merry. Praise the Lord. The moment he turned around, everybody said he turned around. The moment he sat down and said, I am a foolish boy. The moment he sat down and said, what I have done to my father is not good. And he went to his father and he repented. His status changed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He no longer had to eat with pigs. Imagine, somebody was eating with pigs. Now they had to go and slaughter a fatted calf for him. And a party began. Hallelujah. He didn't have to wear rats and unclean clothes anymore. He was wearing shiny clothes. Everybody says status has changed. <laughs> Hallelujah. He had his father's love and compassion. I mean, it's also a senior state in status because he could have had a curse. He has his father's commitment. The father put a ring on his finger and said, Now that you have come to me, with your senses, I'm also committed to you. He had new shoes. His feet are delivered from going astray. His feet are delivered from walking around. Some people need deliverance of their feet. Hallelujah. Because they go where they should not go. Hallelujah. The places that don't glorify their Father. Amen. 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 Your feet are delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You need to let your feet stand in the congregation of the saints. No more song of heart. There was music, there was merriment, there was dancing for his sake. Somebody said his status changed. <laughs> Amen. He has become the object of the father's attention and his brother envied him. See when you thoroughly repent. Amen. Ever say thoroughly repent. I know we want a change of status without repentance. Zero. Hallelujah. You can have some mercy here and there. But this is full change. 
How many of us have full change of status? Huh? Hallelujah. Not just uh, the ring of the Father. You know, our Father is always committed to us. Amen. But he put the ring, he put the robes, he changed the shoes, he started a party for him. His life was now a celebration. Somebody said, I received full change of status in the name of Jesus. But everything is in your hand. Hallelujah. Your own status, your own standing with your father must change spiritually before you can have this full change of status. Heaven must first acknowledge you. Amen. Heaven must first be clapping on your behalf. Go back to that Luke 15 and uh, from verse. From verse 1 to 10. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners that to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man received sinners and eateth with them. And he spoke this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, don't not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he laid it on the shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven. Over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. If a one woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she has found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But Satan says there is joy in heaven when you repent. One person, hallelujah, the whole of heaven is rejoicing. Verse 10 says the angels of God are rejoicing. Why are the angels clapping their hands and rejoicing? Do you know that you are more work for your angels when you are a sinner? Huh? When you go into the night club, the angel has to stand outside. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You go and down with the stand outside. You are with prostitutes, they stand away. But God has said, that one is my child and is going astray. You must not. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So your poor angels are in trouble. Hallelujah. When you are watching those stupid movies in the house, they, they go out. And when they are not there, anything can happen to you. You give them more work. Hallelujah. So when you finally repent, they start to dance. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's what Jesus says. Praise the Lord. When you are fighting in their house, who? The angels. Amen. I have seen God open my eyes once. One of my brother's house to see the angel there like this. Very sad. Amen. As I was visiting and I stayed there and we were praying. And I God opened my eyes as we were praying that the angel was like this. Ah, so I said, let's stop praying. I see something here. I said, what's going on here in this house? And the Lord said, no, the angel is sad because when pastor is not around, the wife and the children do not do what they should do. They are not praying. It doesn't say they are sinning, they will be understand sin. I'm going to that prayerlessness is a great sin. 
If you are in your house, you are not prayerful. All you do is eat and watch movies. Your angels are like this. Because they are angry, and then they know that very soon you will get in trouble. Hallelujah. A prayerless Christian is going to be in trouble very soon. Very, very soon. So I said, what do I do? And then my brother said, uh -huh. I have been warning them. Hallelujah. So it is possible for you to have angels that are sad, or they just stand out because there's darkness in the house. There's sin in the house. There's problem in the house. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand and say, my angels as from today. You must rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. Evangelist Wally was telling me the other day, he stayed behind at home and said, wow, that's your house. I said, ah, my house is special. I know how to keep my angels in place. Amen. You come and visit me and you are likely to make my angels run away and you want to go. Just don't do those things here. Keep your angels inside your house. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.